the first gears kind of felt like an insurgence. It felt like four guys kind of going behind enemy lines, you know, maybe taking out some locusts here and there. And uh, we really wanted to ratchet that up in the sequel and kind of give the feeling of all-out war. Incoming! And we have these scenarios now which hundreds of locusts are attacking the player and giant uh, creatures are you know, bearing down on him. And, uh, and we basically built the game around this idea of water cooler moments so that every, like, five to ten minutes there's something memorable going on outside of the core loop of combat. Because we really want players to feel like they're playing a Hollywood blockbuster experience start to finish. You know, the game actually has a lot more variety in environments than the first game. You know, you go all the way from the deepest depths of the underground all the way to the highest snow-capped peak on Sierra, and uh, the look is a little bit more saturated this time around. It's still a dark, you know, kind of uh, drab universe in many ways, but it's not quite as drab as the first game. The story, however, that's a little bit darker this time around. So in Gears 1, we felt like we had a, a very good formula that worked very, very well. The game was very successful, but we as creatives and perfectionists never want to stop working on all of that. So in Gears 2, uh, we implemented this idea, first and foremost, of, of stopping power. So that if a player is getting shot by bullets, he will physically slow down, which will reduce the amount of players rolling into each other and shotgunning, which we were honestly never big fans of. On top of that, we have about 400 plus tweaks to the cover system. I feel like, you know, in Gears 1, the cover system worked perfectly about 85% of the time. In Gears 2, we're shooting for as close to 100% as possible, as far as the player hitting the A button and having the expected behavior happen, as far as what angle he enters cover, and being able to interrupt a SWAT turn or even interrupt a cover dive, and, you know, how crisp the climbing over cover feels, and whether or not he en accidentally enters cover during roadie running and things like that. So we have tons of tweaks to uh, make the cover system what I believe is uh, the best in the business. Well, in the multiplayer, we knew we wanted to have far deeper functionality as far as having many, many more multiplayer modes. Uh, we also wanted to make sure we had a party system, which was very much a no-brainer for us coming off of Gears 1. And uh, adding things like photo mode and having better achievement tracking, uh, you know, having a war journal and things like that. I think all of that adding together really kind of takes the game from just being a simple shooter into essentially being a platform that players can play for months on end. We're fans of Deathmatch and Free For All. We think that they're cool, but if we were going to do that in the Gears universe, we knew we were going to do it with our own unique original twist on it. So we came up with the idea of essentially five teams of two players each. So it kind of combines a Free For All Deathmatch with a co-op buddy, also with a last man standing type dynamic. So once you're out, you're out for that round. And uh, you basically better watch your buddy's back because when you spawn, there's enemies all over the map. And uh, you get two players versus eight players. It gets very intense very quickly. Essentially in Gears 2, the player has a lot of different ways you can use the chainsaw. In the campaign mode, he can use it to cut through certain areas to get to new locations. Uh, if you have an enemy that has a chainsaw, you can engage in a chainsaw duel in which uh, you hit the B button as fast as possible. And uh, whoever has the highest average wins that and saws the other person. And you can also come in from behind, flip your chainsaw up, and cut them from uh, down low all the way up high, which is not pretty. When you knock an enemy down in Gears 2, they uh, go on all fours, and then they start trying to crawl away from you. And uh, when you get up close to them, basically every single colored button will do something to him. So A will take that person hostage, and uh, X will do a curb stomp, B does a quick melee bash and finishes them off, and uh, Y does kind of a very extended, uh, kind of panache-filled uh, execution move. We wanted to give players just multiple options when their enemies are taken down, so they can quickly finish them off, or if they want to showboat, they can do that as well. We're really upgrading the arsenal in Gears 2 so that when players take somebody hostage they have this great semi-automatic pistol they can take enemies out with. We have the Scorcher which is a great flamethrower which is amazing to blind fire with by the way. You can also stick every single type of grenade on walls and set traps for your enemies. And uh, We have a whole other uh, section of weapons that we've yet to reveal yet that should be coming out soon. So keep your eyes peeled this November for Gears of War 2 coming exclusively on Xbox 360. It's going to be a hell of a ride.